because you have, have, have you know this lane of crime uh, shows, crime podcast, and to catch a predator, um, the show. Do you have opinions on sex crimes? What is your opinion? I know each state is different, but do you think they're harsh enough? Um, what is your take on it? Because you must understand it differently because you, there's certain you have an agenda. You're like you see it so closely um, in, in, in a different you're like you're almost as close as in you're a right weird way there. closer than being a cop from, from because you, you to me. It's specific you know, all, you know, yeah. this is a specific thing. Well, what is your take franchise. on the laws? I, I, they vary state to state in Georgia. They're very good. And Georgia's the hardest. Georgia is among the hardest. And we did a sting down there years ago. And these guys went away. I mean, there's no plan down there in California. The first one we did, it was viewed by that particular judge as a TV reality show sting. So a lot of the guys got slaps on the wrist later they enacted much stricter laws because we did two more investigations in California and the guys did uh, time. Uh, but it, it, they have grown stricter. I, years ago, I testified in front of Congress about all this and, and the solutions to it and, and, and what do you do. And, and I, I think we want in American society a one-size-fits-all solution. Right? right. Lock them up, do whatever you're going to do, find the treatment program that works or you know, monitor them forever. And the truth of the matter is that these guys aren't all one guy. And I'm not a therapist, I'm not a cop, but I've come face to face with 500 or so of them. And I Man. think they, come, they break down into three categories. There's the hardcore heavy hitter who'd be doing this with or without the internet. This is the guy who's at the food court at the mall, the bad, you know, Cub Scout leader, the bad little league coach who's looking for opportunities every minute of the day. Then there's a young, socially inept offender who's early 20s who says stuff online they wouldn't say face to face. And they figure, well, if she's 13 or 14 now, if this works out in a couple of years, she'll be older, it'll be okay. They view it as a Romeo Juliet situation. Uh -huh. And these guys, they can probably be treated, monitored, and wrapped on the nose and never offend again. Mm -hmm. But then there's this interesting middle category this is where you find the doctor the cop the rabbi mm. the uh, military officer these guys have a urge or a predilection to have sex with somebody who's underage Ugh. boy or girl but they wouldn't act on it without the internet and again you have this anonymity this access this addictive quality and at some point these guys cross the line between fantasy and reality and they're knocking on our door and these guys are the most complicated in terms of treatment. You know, some, you know, will be, be in so much trouble that they'll be ashamed that, you know, they'll, 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 they'll just live a life of, of quiet shame and horror. Some will reoffend. Some will go straight and, you know, open up a business and I'll call them to say, do you want to go on my podcast or do you want to, you know, talk about this? I'll say, no, there's no benefit for me in this. I just live in my life. Some are very angry. I mean, I get threats all the time. You know, from the people that from some of these guys, do you you've caught people that are second time offenders on your shows? We have. So we had it doesn't happen a lot, but we had one guy show up in Riverside, California, California. The first sting we did in collaboration with law enforcement, the Riverside County Sheriff's Department. And we had so many guys in that particular sting. We had 51 guys in three days, which was a shocking number, and we could barely keep up with it. God. Walks in, and he's got a scar on the side of his head, and he's slow, you know. And he was in the show, but he didn't have a leading role because, you know, it didn't really go anywhere from a storytelling perspective. Several weeks later, we're in Long Beach, California, and the same guy... Michael Seibert, still remember his name, shows up in the chat and he wants to meet the girl and says, I can't come on Friday because I've got a court date. I can mm. come on Saturday. The court date was from the Riverside bus. Wow. So in the meantime, we do a background search and we find out that he had done a year in jail for a violent assault. How how can so this somebody, time he's making the movie a violent you know, assault on a kid or violent not assault? A, just a violent assault and some uh, adult adult on fight? No no no. Be, no, I'm I'm being serious about this because because I think it's an important question and I know it's kind of you know listen I know you, you're a straight news guy. 
Is what they say about child predators in jail true? Like, do they get, are they treated as the bottom, the, bo- the bottom? And do you know about like certain people that you, you know, uh, that, that have been arrested, that have put in jail, that like, that have gotten the treatment that everyone sort of hopes that, that, the, the, you know, that you hear about these myths. You don't know if it's true, not true, but everybody sort of, you know, says when they have anything, they have any true knowledge of real, they go, they're the bottom of the bottom. Child offenders and rapists. Is that I real? Think, I think generally that's true. And I can tell you this. One of the guys arrested in the suburban Washington, D.C. Um, case investigation, who was prosecuted by the FBI, so he did, was doing federal time. So there one night in the, he got five and a half years, five, almost six years. They're in the prison TV room, federal corrections facility, and they're watching Predator reruns. And uh, his segment comes up. And they're looking, and they're looking, and they figure out that guy is that guy. And he had a rougher go from then on. Do you know how rough? I don't know how rough. But you heard it was rougher. I heard from very reliable law enforcement sources that it was rough. Why are there not, or maybe there are, but it's just on the show, female Per predators, sexual predators. We've never had one in any of our investigations. Never. Ne- never. We had one where a guy said, I'm bringing my girlfriend or wife along. We think that was a ruse to, you know, con the decoy posing as an underage girl into doing what he wanted her to do. The therapists tell us that it's because when you talk about female predators, you're more likely to see the teacher-student scenario. Uh-huh. The female predator doesn't get off on the anonymity the way the male predator does. Right. And so it's happened, and I'm aware of cases. We've never seen one in 18 years of doing these things. You just never had it on your we've show, never had it on, on, your, on your stuff. I don't, think it's, I don't think it's anywhere close to being like the male on uh, female or male on male predators. Now, I would be remiss. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, if, if, if I didn't uh, tell you, the, the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast has an award-winning segment, okay, Chris? It's called the Sick Fuck of the Week, which is inspired <laughs> I've by— I've got about 500 of them for you. But <laughs> yes, and, and, and I just wanted to let you know, like, one of the reasons why I was so excited uh, uh, to have you here is because uh, what I should have done— what I should have done is pull some sick fucks and 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 the, the sick fuck of the week segment on the I am Rapport Stereo Podcast. I, I it's a certain somebody with a certain je ne sais quoi. So I stay away from anything that's too violent. Like I like, well, I don't want to say I like. I'd say we, the think tank at the I am Rapport Stereo <laughs> Podcast. Um, there's there's a certain amount of um uh, uh, uh there's uh, um. A- animal, um, uh, uh, pl- what is the word um, with with the with the animals? Um, bestiality. Bestiality. I've got your sick fuck of the week. You got a sick fuck of the week. I've got a sick fuck of the week. Please, please. We're in Washington. This is great. We're in Herndon, Virginia. Wait, let me bring this in. Washington. Single. This is an I am Rappaport Stereo Podcast exclusive. I have Chris Hansen bringing you the sick fuck of the week. We had a guy in our suburban Washington, D.C. investigation who had chatted for days and days with somebody he thought was a young teenage girl, wanting her to involve her dog in the sex act. Very specific and precise requests involving her having sex with the dog and then him having sex with her afterwards. Now, he walks in... And I've got the transcripts. He's a military guy. Military intelligence officer. Walks in, and the first thing he says is, and you can hear him mutter it. The mic picks it up. Where's the dog? So he comes in, and I lay into him with the transcripts. And, you know, there's talk of a dog. There's talk of the girl having sex with the dog. And there's talk of you using that in a way so you can have sex with the girl because she's a virgin. And he, you know, I got a problem. I've got issues. I got to figure it out. And I'm, boom, he goes away for four years. Now I find him and I reach out for the podcast. And he basically says, don't ever call me again. Fair enough. His significant other, he was married, the wife died, and he's dating this other woman, calls me and says, this gets weird. I'm a bit of a fan. 
and I think it'd be good for him to do the interview. So we go through this for months of back and forth, and, and he lays into me, you ruined my life, blah, 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 da, da, da. I said, Joe, let us review the facts of the case. You wanted to ha a girl to have sex with a dog so that she would be lubricated so you could take her human virginity, right? So you're going to be mad at me? You did this. And what would have happened if I wasn't there with my crew and you found a girl? And this guy, it wasn't his first rodeo, right? So he ultimately says he'll do the interview. Then they go radio silent. And we went to this particular part of the country looking for them because I thought I could find them and talk them into it. And they were nowhere to be found. And uh, so who knows? And now they've changed numbers and they, they're, you know, they're not in touch anymore. So I, I my current opinion is they probably won't do it. But I would like to, I would, is, as much as he is the sick fuck of the week, Oh, clearly, I would still like to sit down and interview him and figure out, well, you know, where, where have you fixed yourself? How did you fix yourself? He was in intensive therapy. He did, I think, four years in prison. And it was federal time because it was, he, got, he got convicted by a military tribunal. Because he, he was in one of the early investigations where police were not involved in the actual sting. Oh, man, that's, that's disturbing. But the, I mean, the federal government took it so seriously, the military took it so seriously, the Army, that they put out a press release saying, you know, we referred this case to the U.S. Attorney's Office. Right. And they successfully prosecuted it, and he did serious time. Wow. Um, that's, that's a true blue sick fuck yep. of the week. And that's what we do at the I am Rapport stereo <laughs> podcast, man. That's going to be helpful. Yeah. Uh, um, okay. So.